You go to YouTube's uh, top trending videos and almost always number one, two, four, six, and seven happen to be music videos. They are so popular. They get millions and millions of views overnight. And so he says that because these music videos are now so popular and increasingly people are watching those as well as listening to the music, itself. He says, now I'm making a hell of a lot more money than I used to. Again, I'm quoting Mick Jagger. Then he says that the music we produce frees up the youth and I'm quoting him verbatim. The youth ought to be able to do whatever they want in spite of their parents because parents inhibit their ability to express themselves sexually and whatnot. And so music frees up the youth and encourages them to engage in whatever activi activity they please in spite of parental discipline and what have you. Now, I want to give you one example of the lyrics of Billy Joel, again, a popular uh, singer, songwriter. These are the lyrics to his song, Only the Good Die Young. Just listen to what he says. Again, this is without the music. This is without all the sound effects. This is just the lyrics themselves. Tell me what you think about the immoral message that this is driving home. He says, come out, Virginia, don't let me wait. Virginia apparently is some girl he's talking to, some hypothetical. Come out, Virginia, don't let me wait. You Catholic girls start much too late. But sooner or later, it comes down to fate. I might as well be the one. They say there's a heaven for those who will wait. Some say it's better, but I say it ain't. I mean, it goes against the very soul of religion, brothers and sisters. Listen to the rest. I'd rather laugh with the sinners than cry with the saints. Sinners are much more fun and only the good die young. I mean, until you actually sit down and read it, I guess most people don't really pay much attention to what's being said if they were listening to the actual music. The point here being brothers and sisters, the immorality that is embedded deep within the music industry. The same immorality that you find in the pornography industry. The same encouragement of sinful, illicit acts that you find in the worst possible medium is right here. And it's being perpetuated and being promoted and being purchased. People pay good money. As I said, close to $20 billion was the size of the world's music industry. And that's just direct sales we're talking about. We're not even talking about all the great fandoms that are created around these celebrities and these singers and, and so forth, right? The sheer amount of time in the United States, the average teenager listens to music four hours a day. But the amount of time they spend reading the gossip and everything to do with their favorite singers and following them on social media, the effect is compounded. But I think one of the worst aspects and the the effect of the music industry and the songs is the immorality that they encourage and the fact that they take away our inhibitions, our inhibitions which are necessary to guard our souls against immorality, against sinful acts and whatnot. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam says, he says, Inna Allah ba'athani rahmatan lil alameen. Many people know that the Holy Prophet is sent as a mercy to mankind. It's mentioned in the Quran, it's mentioned in the Hadith. I have been sent as a mercy to mankind. And to destroy and obliterate these musical instruments and the things that were prevalent in the time of the era of ignorance, the time of Jahiliyyah, the pre-Islamic pagan era. He says that musical instruments were used as a tool to promote Satanism, to promote immorality. And again, you know, this isn't history. This isn't ancient history from the time before the Prophet's advent. This is right here, right now. Any music video that's out there, that's, at, that, you know, that's breaking the charts, at least read the lyrics and you'll know what I'm talking about. Imam al-Sadiq says in a hadith and I quote, Baytul Ghina, a house in which songs are being played, la tu'manu fihi al-fajia. There is no guarantee that a tragedy will not take place over there. And what greater tragedy than immorality? We're not just talking about an earthquake. We're not just talking about a natural disaster. We're talking about the greatest of all tragedies, which is immorality, which is being distanced from God and driven away from God's kingdom and sanctuary. And no prayer is answered 
in a house, in a home where music is being played. And angels will not enter into that home. A lot of people say, Sayyid, you know, we've been praying for this, that, and you know, we're not seeing an answer. God isn't answering our prayers. Well, maybe because you have blocked yourself from being the recipient of God's mercy. Maybe because we're doing something that would stop our, our prayers from even reaching the heavens. And in this hadith, the Imam clearly says that music is one of those things that insulates the home. It insulates the individual. It puts you in a little bubble of yourself and therefore you're unable to hear God or have God answer your prayer. قال رسول الله كان إبليس أول من تغنى. Iblis, meaning shaitan, was the first person to invent singing. He was the first person to sing and give rise to this medium, which in almost all cases, with some very, very minuscule and small exceptions, it is one that gives rise to immorality and sin.